Hey there, Matt Petrowski here for Confident Builder, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at aligning and spacing things in SketchUp. Always new stuff to learn. Let's head to my desktop. All right, I love covering all kinds of things with regards to being a confident builder that's in SketchUp and even out of SketchUp. And what I have above of me here are just three extensions that you'd think this feature was in SketchUp natively, but it's not. Let's take a quick look at these. Obviously, what we have is Curic Align, Curic Space, and Curic Mirror. If you don't know how to get these, you can always go up to your extension warehouse, which you're going to be able to download things from. And in this particular case, you don't have to go to a third party website. I'll just show you the one. We'll type in Curic and we'll type in Align. There we have it right there. We will select that one. Up it will come and you can see right there, we've got it available for free. Click there and do it for each of the three and then you're able to install this. Now I wish these were sort of all integrated into SketchUp. You would think that most drawing programs have an alignment. You, for example, would select on your three items. Well, let's use the right cursor right there or the right selection. You'd right click and then somewhere within this menu, you would find some type of align. Now there is the align tool, the mirror tool, and the space tool, but these only exist because of the fact, hopefully I'm not blocking it there, because we have installed them. And of course we have the uh, little palettes right here where we're able to see those. So without further ado, let's get into this. We can see right here, when we zoom in, let's uh, get everything all nice here. We can see quite clearly that these are not in a very good alignment. So if we wanted to align these, all we have to do is select all of them. We could do that by selecting one, holding down the shift key and selecting others. We can also use our encircle marquee, which is selecting outside and drawing a bounding box that so completely surrounds everything we want. Or we can use our Passover marquee, which is basically anything that this marquee passes over or it falls on top of, that becomes selected. Now I have all of these grouped, so it's not raw geometry, uh, but once I have them selected, all I have to do is click on the little icon, in this case for the align, which I'll do right now. And what's really cool about this one is you can see as I move around here, it provides a very visual way of being able to align these objects on any axes that you want. So we've got the red there, we've got the blue, and you can see that as I hover, notice the plane as it uh, as your positioning really matters in terms of what you're looking at here. So there we've got a plane that was right in the middle. So if I wanted to align everything um, horizontally in the middle, that's where I would do that. So you sort of have to move things around and pass them the way that you want. So let's bring everything to the front here and everything goes right to the front. Now we want to bring this all the way to the bottom. Well, we're just going to zoom down here to the bottom or try to get that bottom plane. And there it is right there. We click and then everything is now aligned right there on the bottom. So that's Curic Align. Let's move on to the next one. Um, Curic Space. Now, if you don't know, I'm just going to give you a pointer just because some new users don't know this. It was a, a wonderful epiphany to me once I, sound, once I found it. You can align things within a given area in SketchUp by default. You simply just need to know, need to know what's your starting point and what's your ending point. So I'm gonna make a copy of this with, uh, hit the M key and hit the option here, drag this out on the green axes. And I'm gonna make another one with the intention of having something in between. Now this isn't the Curic space uh, functionality. This is native functionality that we have in SketchUp. We'll make another copy of these by holding, uh, clicking the option key. And all of our tool tips are all down right here. We always want to read down there what will happen. Now, as soon as I do that activity, you can see that when I start to type, uh, start typing in the measurements, I can actually type in a divide. So if I do the forward slash and say divide by three, what happens is SketchUp makes a determination between that first one and this second one where I just ended at, it takes and divides that. Now I can change it again if I want to without, I haven't selected or clicked on anything else. If I go divide by four, that will do that. If I go divide by two, it will then just put the one in between the two. It, it basically accounts for this one and this one being too inclusive of the drag that I made. Now that's all well and good. We can do that if we're, we're using the native tools when we're planning things out, but there comes a time where you need to space things out and you just wanna be able to do it. 
Well, here with this space, we are able to actually select all of the items. Again, you could use the marquee. I don't know why it doesn't do this sometimes, but it doesn't select all those. What do I have to do here to get this to come active? Sometimes this icon for me, at least on the Mac, does not actually go active, and I'll figure out how to get that active. There it is right there. For some reason, I hit the space bar, and the space bar actually activates my arrow tool. But with that now active, for some reason, there must be something where it detects a selection or something to that effect. Um, we'll use the marquee and uh, pass over everything. We will now select this. Again, like the alignment tool, we get this really nice effect where we have this uh, these indications of the axes. Now with this particular one, you need to select on the axes where you want to space things. In this case, the blue wouldn't make sense and the green wouldn't make sense, but the red perfectly makes sense. Now the way that this works is once I have selected the axes with all of my objects selected, I can now specify the spacing that I want in between these. Now it pays off to know that the uh, space is not in between one edge and another edge, although you, um, it looks like hovering over that, you might be able to actually do that in this particular tool. I haven't even done that. Um, the default is through the middle of the objects. Now these objects I believe are one foot by one foot, but if I put in here, um, let's see, uh, one foot, yep, it's gonna put them in between. So if this is a one foot object, the center of this is one foot on center to the next object. And again, without having, uh, touched or clicked on anything else, I can adjust this spacing at any time and I could put in, say for example, three feet and it will go out three feet or two feet and it will go out two feet or 1.5 feet and it will just space to whatever you need. Now I'm gonna have to play with that with the selection here in terms of what it does. Maybe if I select on the edge and I do one feet, let's see uh, what that will put in right there. We'll put one feet. Ah, now that's pretty cool. So there's, you can select on an edge in order to actually get that to align different ways. I have to play with that in order to understand what's going on. Basically, when I opened up the plugin, I uh, just started playing with it and I didn't actually see that feature where you could click on a particular edge in order to get those to shift and uh, space them out. But that's a pretty cool thing. So the final thing we're gonna take a look at in this video, of course, is what we have right over here, and that is the Curic Mirror. Now, as we all know, or maybe we don't all know, when you're drawing something that has symmetry, you'll only need to draw half of that object, or in this particular case, just one quarter of it. So I've got a, a table here, which would be a leg. I need to hit my space bar and get that tool selected so that I'm off of the Curic space. But we have this grouped object here. And in order to mirror this, I simply just select on the tool of the Curic mirror. And now we're able to mirror based on pretty much anything. Now you have to be aware of what's actually happening. As we zoom in right here, I want you to pay attention that when I hover over this leg, that right there is telling me you are going to mirror this object based on this plane. So you can see the dashed line that's actually appearing right now, which is sh showing you where it's actually going to show up. So in this case, it's pretty interesting because my leg is slightly slanted. The mirror will be slanted right on top of it. Whereas if I do want that table effect, I'm simply going to select this pane right here. We can see the dashed line is going to show me that I'm going to make another one right there. Um, I do need to use the copy command. So we'll undo that and I will hold down the option key in order to click that, and I now have the other half of that one quarter. Of course, spin this around right now, just hold down the shift key, select the other part. We'll go back, select that mirror tool again, and now we just select and make sure that we're on that pane. We can see that the dashed line is showing me. We hit that option key in order to get that little plus. Notice right there by the icon, that's coming up, and there we go. I would now be able to, uh, if this was within a group or within a component, I would be able to uh, drill down into the component and then basically just group these four pieces and then erase the lines and I'd be good to go. But for the most part, this functionality is something that you would hope would be in SketchUp by default. I mean, what design program doesn't have the ability to align or to automatically space things? Well, 
we don't have it. But if you add it with the Keurig uh, Align space and mirror, you have those basic tools, which is really cool. Now, Keurig has a lot of other extensions. Um, I'd love to review them. Let's head over to my web browser right here. You can find them at this domain. It is Keurig4SU.com. Take a look at his extensions. If you're an extension developer in the world of SketchUp and you'd like me to review your uh, extension and what it does. Provide me with the documentation, the extension, and I will cover it as best as I can. Also, if you have any feedback or any information about other ways to do this, maybe there's some alternatives that you prefer better, leave it in the comments down below. And of course, if this video has helped you out, you can give me a like. And of course, you know what to do if you'd like to have more of these types of videos and be notified that I subscribe. All right, till next time, see you later.